Welcome to a very special edition of Rational Alchemy. Though today we should probably call ourselves Rational Barbecue. Louisiana Glynn, welcome back to the studio. Thank you for having me. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today? We're going to do a little fried catfish along with rational barbecue, and we'll have it spare ribs, and we'll have some lanyard with it, sweet peas, joyful greens, potato salad. Joyful greens? I've never heard that expression before. I'm, I'm curious now. Now, I noticed we've got a bowl set up here. What are we going to be doing first? We're going to make tartar sauce first. Oh, okay. So if you grab the ingredients, we could get after it real quick. I will get right on top of that. I believe that is all you need. Simple. Perfect. I'm going to open some wine. So while he opens the wine, we're going to make a simple tartar sauce, which will be mayonnaise, relish, and hot sauce and we'll mix it all together. And remember, you're the king and queen of your kitchen, so you don't have to worry about measurements. Do it all to taste. I think we need to probably keep you sober today, so um, I'm giving you only half a glass to start with. How does that look? That looks great, but I will wait for you. Oh, you didn't have to do that. With the full glass. No, 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 no. I better. Be I have to behave myself. It's midday. Well, we're on camera. I have to behave myself. Yes, sir. <laughs> Understood. So, we're going to mix the simple tartar sauce. So that's going to be that's going to be almost a cup right there, if you're measuring. And we're just going to throw some relish, including the juice. Including the juice. Okay. And we're going to get a couple of dashes of hot sauce. And from that point, you could take the rest of these ingredients and we're going to simple little stir. And you have your own tartar sauce. A 10 year old could do it. So we can put this in the refrigerator. Even I could do this. I'm pretty sure. No, I'd mess it up some. <laughs> <laughs> what comes next? So next we're going to do the cocktail sauce. Ah, okay. So let me bring the bowl over there we'll for you. We'll get the bowl over here. I'll throw this in the fridge and, and I'll go, go and get the ingredients. So I believe this that's is what it. you need. Perfect. So for the simple cocktail sauce, same by the cup. We don't have too many people. A little Cajun seasoning. This is Louisiana Glen's house seasoning that goes on my Tay-Tays, crawfish queso Tay-Tays at, for Southern Fried Saturday. A little onion powder. And we have some horseradish sauce. It's a little lighter than the horseradish. Is it best to use um, sort of horseradish sauce or, or a very hot horseradish sauce? I found the sauce is the same, but the texture with the ketchup makes it a little oh. lighter. Okay, that makes sense. And then we'll throw the W sauce. I'm not going to try to say Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. <laughs> and now we're going to whip this up, stir it up real good. Get the clumps from the sauce, from the horseradish sauce out. Do you find mixing with a spoon works okay? I it's, always use a fork. You're the king and queen of your own kitchen, so you can use whatever you, whatever you fancy. You want. Yeah. Whatever you feel like using. If it works, use it, right? If it works, use it. How long have you been a, a chef? 20 years. Wow. 20, 26 years, to be exact. 26 years. 
no matter no matter what other job I right. do, anything I do, I always go back to cooking. And that's just simple cocktail sauce. They're not kidding. I, I can't believe how quickly those came together. While we wait for him. I'm back. We're <laughs> glad you're back. So now we're going to go into the catfish. I'll put the gloves on. I'm going to go and grab the fish. Thank you, sir. And I'm going to take a sip. I had never had catfish until coming to America. And I consider this to be one of the best fishes, tastiest fishes around. I really do. You brought me to a blast from the past right there. When oh, you really? Said coming to America. Right. I thought you, I, I, I thought you was talking about Eddie Murphy. No, no, no. Coming no. to America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you caught me off guard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, what are we gonna, what we gonna do here? I need uh, the seasoning, the house seasoning, and the mustard. Okay. And what I'm, what mustard. I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cut some in strips. And I'll keep some whole. And can we get a little hot sauce with that? Little hot sauce. There we go. So normally, when I do fry catfish, when I start frying, the, when I start heating the grease up, the neighbors start peeking. Mm -hmm. When the smell start leaking. Just as it should. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, Can I you? notice you're, you're using a much smaller fillet uh, than normal. Do you prefer working with, the, with the, the smaller ones or the larger ones? So, when we do our Southern Fried Saturdays, I'm able to get the smaller fish, and I'm able to give everybody two pieces of catfish. Ah. And they have a choice I, of the I entree. understand. Good, good and idea. And then the small pieces we can do as appetizers. So it, it serves both it, purposes. It serves both Entree purposes. Entree and appetizer. That's a good way of doing it. Now, we're gonna put, actually I'll put the whole pieces in first, and then we're gonna put a little hot sauce. A little mustard and our house seasoning. So, at this point, if you're not seasoned, you ain't sneezing. <laughs> have so, you ever had cayenne pepper go straight up your nose? Yes. Oh, that's a trip and a half. And I have rubbed my eyes, which made for a bad day. A very bad day. So now we have uh, a paper bag. Ah, okay. I'm going to grab the paper bag and I'm going to clean my mess. It's a there good go. chef clean as he goes. Absolutely. And we're just going to keep these ingredients right here. So, back in the day when I was growing up, my grandmother didn't have all the new apparatuses. You would use to season your catfish. Could you hold this bag yes, for me, sir? We're going to double bag it. Because no one likes eating off the floor. That's right. And now we're going to use the Zatarans fish fry. So now we're going to dump the contents into another bag. Thank you, sir. We're going to put the catfish ah. in the bag. I always have trouble, you know, getting getting even coatings on food. And, uh, I never thought of actually using a large uh, paper bag. And all we do is, yeah, shake, rattle, and roll. So before we fry the fish, let me move this wine out of the way for you. Thank you. I don't want to. I'm going to put this over here. Knock the beverage over. So if you would hold this bag right here, yep. that way I can make less mess. And you just dig in, dive in, shake the excess seasoning off, and then we're gonna, you hear that? Oh, absolutely. Talking to you. 
Uh, what temperature did you uh, preheat to? 350. 350. Oh, that's a sound I love to hear. Perfect. Can you hear this in camera world? Can you hear this in the bubbling? It's talking to you, ready to be. So now that we have all done? Okay, I'm gonna we're put, done. I'll put this down for a minute. We can put it right back up here. I'm oh. gonna slide over here. I have to wash my hands. Okay. I want to make sure that's away from there. Yep. And if you would grab a plate with some paper towels, we're gonna go in on in and drop the strips. And we're done with that. Oh, they're turning a nice golden brown. GBD. Ah. Golden brown and delicious. Absolutely. Not me. The fish. Well, definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called many things in my past. <laughs> delicious was never one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to fry that for about five minutes. And actually, they'll start floating. Oh, oh that's a good trick. They'll start floating. Oh, let me hold this for you. I put my hand underneath. Yes, sir. We're done with that. So okay. we can send it back. Oh, there's one more, one uh, more in what, there. One Trying to escape the Try, You gotta get in. You gotta oh. get in the bag. Oh. Gotta get in. While that's frying, we're gonna go ahead on and shake this up. Now, I remember the first interview you said you lived in Huntsville, Alabama. That is correct. Bit. Three years. So you know a little bit about catfish. Oh yes, oh yes. And hopefully this hits your taste buds like it did in Huntsville. Oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure Huntsville, it will. Huntsville, Louisiana, yeah. The, the only difference is, is the second time I went out to this place called Greenbriars, which was way out in the middle of nowhere, we actually sat eating catfish, watching a tornado go across a field. Y'all really want a catfish. It, there's Huntsville, Alabama for you. <laughs> Yeah, I really want a catfish. Um, utensils. And I'm so, gonna take another sip here. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna bring you both to see which one is easiest to use. So right now, we're gonna... Not quite? Not quite. So, why don't we wait just a couple of seconds? You're very good health. And you are very good help. We had, a, we had a, a chef that used to be on British TV a lot called the Galloping Gourmet, and I believe he did actually have a, a time over here in America, and he always said, wine in food, never put wine in food you will not drink. And I think I've followed that advice ever since, and I think it's really good advice. So it sounds like you drink wine every time there is food. Not every time. <laughs> I drink wine in between meals as well, but we won't go into that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. No. So now that everything is going real good, as you can see, it's frying up real good. Oh, real. Oh, look at that. And we're going to give it a few minutes here. Okay. And if you would grab the ribs. Oh, certainly. Out the oven and we could sit them and start getting ready for that process. Do you know how difficult it is to put gloves over gloves? <laughs> Safety though. We have another. Where would you like me to put this? On the, on the I'll put it, I'm gonna, it on I'm gonna sit it right, right there. And you have, we have another pan with these sides. And then after the sides, we can uh, roll with the potato salad. And you want the potato salad now? We can Let get me the take potato these salad off. ready. And as we're going, we're just waiting until it float. I like mine kind of crispy. Oh, absolutely. You know, you never want to get a soft piece of fried catfish. Right. And, and the nice thing about doing a deep frying like this is because of the way that you've coated it, it seals all the moisture all the, in. All the moisture. You get no leakage, so they're just absolutely perfect. When you bite in, it's a crispy bite. Right. Nice and flaky. Yep. And I, th I think you're gonna love it. 
Because you talked about it the last time, and I was like, well, we're going to do we're gonna do Absolutely. This fried catfish, but and like I said, we have a little extra oh. with it. So. I'm falling in love with your deep fryer. I hope you know that. I have three of them. I keep one at the house. Ah. Oh. I get I get fussed at at the house for frying foods in the house. I really I get fussed at. Okay. Yeah. So I so, try. So, so what you're telling me is is you've created a world shortage all on your own of uh, deep fryers. <laughs> <laughs> They come, hey, they come in handy. Oh, absolutely. They come in handy. Because if you, just say, for instance, you have five or six people at home. You invite yep. five or six people. You can do everything. Very, very quickly. Very quick. Put something together. You can, whatever you want to put in, french fries, right. fish, chicken, drop it in. I like what you said about being able to turn catfish into, you know, like an appetizer and, you know, a nibble, something to nibble on. and Or a poor boy. Oh, good old po I knew po' boys were going to come up in the conversation <laughs> again. And actually, we'll take two pieces of catfish and we'll put on, uh, we'll put on our po' boys. Ah. And since you guys are out there, I don't want you to forget Louisiana Glenn is at the Mercantile every other Saturday. You have to pay attention to the Facebook, the Instagram. And the Merc is on 4340. Highway 66 in Meade, Colorado, right down the street from John Deere. Come on in. Come see me. Come holla at your boy. Come on. Come on <laughs> down. We do a crawfish queso. Ah, oh, crawfish. Over tater tots. So I call it my crawfish queso tetes. And like I said, that's every other Saturday. Because crawfish are, again, a very southern thing, aren't they? Crawfish is a very southern thing, but crawfish are very expensive right now. Oh. It's cheaper to take a vacation to Jamaica than to get a bag, a sack of crawfish right now. Really? You're going to pay for a 30-pound or 50-pound sack of crawfish. You're going to pay high dollar. But now they are going to boiling crawfish now. Mm -hmm. So they can make their money yeah. back. So it's a big war. Like I told oh, you, I it's, it's, cheaper, it's cheaper to go on a vacation than to get a sack of crawfish. Yeah. You know. And, that, that, but that don't is... forget about the shrimp. Oh, no. We still have shrimp. We still have crabs. Right. I'm, just thinking, have I'm just thinking, you know, jambalaya, crawfish is one of the main ingredients. Depending on where you Depending go. Depending on where you go, Depending yes. Depending on how far you go down. Ah, okay. I did not realize how Highway deep. 90. Oh, really? Because when you get out of New Orleans, mm -hmm. the food gets different. Everything gets different as you go. As you, as you move what, further east? Further west. Oh, further west, okay. So you get from New Orleans and you get to Thibodeau. But when you get to Homer, Louisiana, from Homer to Generette, Louisiana, everything is different. People really eat off the land. Ah. So... You will have snapping turtle. Right. You will have turtle soup. You know, it's, it's different. It changes as you go. Right. Because in my neck of the woods, you can have somebody that does cracklings. Yep. Hog cracklings. They call them chicharrones up here. Uh, you have hog head cheese, boudin. And then you have your other set of people that will they'll smoke coon, barbecue coon, rabbit. Okay. It's just different. It's just different as you go through it's different different. different sections of the state. Exactly, because you have you have Creole, your French, and your Haitian, but then now as you get down right. the bayou, all the food changes. I, sh I should imagine French and Haitian probably has the most impact on on the original recipes that they put together. Right. You know what? I've got a funny feeling our catfish is just about done, but I I want the expert to have a look. I'm smelling it myself, and it is. Oh, oh, look at that. Golden brown and delicious. And delicious. Yes, Lord. My mouth watering just looking at it. I'm about to mug you. <laughs> I'm mug myself. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we got the, the whole pieces out, yep. we're going to drop... The little catfish bites. Let me get let me get a little bit closer. 
I may have an old pair of platform boots from the 60s. Do you want to borrow them? Hey, all I need is the afro from that point. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy with the platform shoes on frying catfish? There you go. Oh, look at that bubbling away. Oh, yeah. When the smells start leaking, the neighbors start peeking. Yeah. So we're going to have a I in catfish haven right now. We're in catfish kidding. haven. You're not kidding. I wonder who came up with the idea of deep frying. I mean, Fred, I've got a good idea. Why don't we heat some oil up to about 450 degrees and throw fish in it and see what happens? Who came up with that? That's a good question. <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, like I said, we're gonna let those fry until golden brown and delicious. Okay. Guess what? We're gonna make- Oh, we're going all fancy. Yeah, we're gonna make them all. Uh, we're gonna make them dance a little bit. That's a little taster. That's, no, that's a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> teaser, taster? Teaser, taster, same thing. <laughs> same thing. When you say crunchy, that is crunchy. That's what we try to put out. When the love come in every single time, you will get this product every single time. You don't have to be a professional chef to do it. It is trial and error after this fry, mm -hmm. and when we take this out, I'll go it on, and actually, we have some lemon somewhere in the house, and we're gonna make a little garnish right quick, so you can have a little squeeze of lemon over this catfish. Thank you, sir. Here we go. And we'll sit the lemons. That's for garnish to squeeze over the top. Yep. Let me put that there. Those are so close to uh, being done. Yes, sir. While we're waiting for those just to finish off, are there any other ways that you can cook catfish to really make the taste? Yes, you can. So on these little fillets like this, mm -hmm. you could take two of those and you can make crab stuffing. Ah. And stuff them bake them, and have a stuffed catfish. Interesting. Uh, you can do a catfish cubillon. Okay. Which is a Creole dish, tomato base, with the Trinity, stewed tomatoes, and you'll fry some catfish, and you can take some of these and slice them up, and sit them in your sauce as it's cooking and top it over rice. Very nice. Yep. I tell you what I've really got into recently, and that's kush kush. It, I find that to be, I really enjoy it so over rice, actually. What's your version of kush kush? Oh, blimey, I don't know. My version of kush kush comes in a box. <laughs> no, um, I don't really have a version. So, kush kush to me is when my grandmother used to make cornbread. Okay and you crumble the cornbread up and put it in the bowl. Okay. And throw some sugar on it and some milk. That was our kush kush. Okay, I, I think obviously it's different. So me. yeah, some people is couscous. Couscous, yeah. And you're down in our region, kush kush. Okay. So it was simple, the leftover cornbread. Right. You put it in a bowl with some sugar and some milk, and that was it, that, that was, was a it. meal. Wow. That was a meal. And it was tasty? It, very good. And that was a fend for yourself meal with my grandmother. Oh, okay, okay. Because it was certain days she didn't cook. Right. So at that point, you had to fend for yourself. So if she had cornbread. That's what you thing, used to do. Hey, I'm gonna get me a bowl of Kush Kush. And I'm good to go. Quick, simple, and, that, and, and tasty. And tasty. That's, that's all that matters. So now... Oh, these are looking so almost... Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to hold the plate here? It'll, I think it might be easier for you. We got it because we're going to okay. be finished with this in a minute. Oh, okay. And actually, we can turn this off and we're going to be done with the fryer. Just unplug it? Yes, sir. So just thank you being in Huntsville. Mm-hmm. 
you know, uh, down in that area, they call it noodling. Hmm. When they go underwater. Oh, right, and yes. And they get the bit, they put their, they go underwater, get the big catfish, yeah. stick, stick the hand in, and come back out with it. So they do a lot of, uh, a lot of that down in, in that area. Look at these little devils. And where I'm from, from Franklin, Louisiana, he just used to be able to go across the uh, across the street from my house behind the, my childhood church, mm -hmm. and it was the Bayou. It's the Bayou Tash that runs right along, and you can catch catfish. Excellent. Now we're we're going to move this, aren't we? Yeah, we can move this out the way. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it over here on the counter. I think it's important to make yep. sure. Yeah, that's not too bad. I'm just going to put you down here. So now that we've so we're we're now we're, we're now getting we got get, we're getting gonna, to we're the nitty gritty. Gonna, we're going to rig it. We're getting to the good part right now. I believe you want the red cutting board. Yes, sir. Here we go. The ribs. The ribs. Though it's funny you should say that because I think that may be to me. The, the most, most important, important part, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> yeah. So, which one of these would you like me to bring over first? We're going to do that one. This one? Yep. If you can bring... It's still a little warm, so... If you can bring that garbage can. So, these ribs were cooked five hours. Okay. Five and a half. Okay, now I, I'm going to stop you immediately. I've never seen them wrapped in paper before. That's a competition. That's ah. a competition thing. So some people wrap with paper, butcher paper. Some people wrap with just foil. With just foil. I do both. Okay. Because it holds and, the it's, and it seals everything in. It holds the moisture and Is the seasoning. Par parchment paper. Uh, butcher paper. Oh, butcher paper. Okay. It's butcher paper. So I'm sure parchment will probably work. Yeah. Yes, it will. So. So now we set this one on the side. Okay. So what we're gonna do, and I have my own barbecue sauce, but since we're in Colorado, mm -hmm. most people like the sauce on the side. We're gonna let you do your own sauce and I'll just cut the ribs. So that was my Cajun seasoning, mm -hmm. my house seasoning, with a little secret I can't tell you. I'm different from everybody, so I like to turn them over. Actually, that's exactly the way I cut them. They could almost be made of butter. That's just how I like them. I surprise myself sometimes. Just a little self-gloating. <laughs> Sorry, but I love it. Nice and easy. Look at that. Ready for the next one? Ready for the next one. Well, I'm gonna get me a little teaser. Oh my God. Ready? Yes, no. let's put that down here. Let me have a little cut. Yes, sir. Let, let me have a go. You tell me how it feels. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'm making a right pig's... Oh, there's the reason. Look, this knife is so sharp, it actually just... Pull them out. <laughs> In competition, mm -hmm. you would not be looking for this. No. Because no. they want the one bite. Ah, okay. They want it still on the bone with the one bite. Now this, that's your backyard at home. When you're sitting in front of the TV, mm -hmm. Netflix and chilling or Peacock and chilling, mm -hmm. sitting in front watching March Madness. There you go. This is just right for pulled pork. You can pull it them, really put them on a the sandwich. Absolutely amazing. Like I said, we do pull boys, so you can put it on a pull boy. Right. You can do anything, it, pretty much a little bit of everything. And of course, the poor old people at home can't smell how darn good these are. I wish we had oh, smell-o-vision. Smell-o-vision, that's what we I need. I wish we had smell-o-vision. 
But I'm going to steal one from Guy Fieri. We about to go down Flavor Town. Absolutely. We I'm going to I'm going to take these off because they've got a bit greasy. Yes, sir. And uh, I know we're going to have to be getting some stuff out of the fridge. The potato salad. Okie dokie. And then from that point, we can start making some plates. Yeah. And yeah. we can... So, I, talk, I think, talk, talk a little bit about your potato salad. Grandmother's potato salad, Miss Bess's potato salad, Miss Bess's potato salad, a mustard potato salad, base mustard, sweet relish, my Louisiana Glen house seasoning, eggs, mayonnaise, and mustard. You don't want to put raisins and nothing in your potato salad. You don't want all that stuff. Please don't go and put nothing else in the potato salad. Because if you put anything in a potato salad in Louisiana, you will be talked about. People will ask who brought the potato salad. You don't want that. So these are the greens from hell. That's, oh, not the greens from hell, sorry. Um, <laughs> that's the joyful greens. T talk a little bit about that. that. That is really interesting. So this is mustard greens, collard greens, turnip greens all together. Ah, okay. So you have all three of them. And I said joyful greens but it's anointed joyful greens because we have some smoked turkey ah, okay. and ham hocks in there. Oh, as, as, a, as, as a broth? That the meat. Oh, and meat, okay. It's the meat, you know. We, yep. You could use sausage or salt pork, but I'd rather use turkey necks. And once again, I'm turkey legs. You are the king and queen of your kitchen. That's right. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to adhere to anything because you're the ruler. Absolutely. And we have sweet peas. So being that it's a Friday and we're doing this show and it's Lent, on Fridays in Louisiana, you can go anywhere minus the meat. But this will be a staple anywhere you go. Either fried catfish, okay. fried shrimp, sweet peas, potato salad because... Most people, they don't they eat do. meat yeah, on, on a Friday. A, and it's funny you should say that. In Belgium, exactly the same. I used to live in Belgium. Oh, it is? In Belgium, exactly the same, except not catfish, mussels. And, mm. I, and I used to go out, and we used to have a little cafe just around the corner, and we used to get a bowl. It was that, I'm not kidding you, that big, full of mussels cooked in wine and vegetable. Oh. I know somebody. I know somebody very close to me that would love mussels. Speaking of mussels and wine, tank tank. <laughs> well, I, I think after that uh, little episode, now we need to get some more stuff out of the fridge, so we shouldn't drink too much. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Let us get the rest of the feast. So we'll grab a couple of plates here and some utensils. Okay. So we need one for the peas I'm and just gonna... one that scoop for the potato salad. Okay. Let me just move this. Yep. And we're gonna sit this I'll put like that this. there. There we go. Actually, I think uh, for the yeah, just use that one. Here we go. So. Well, we happen to have some little bowls in the cabinet. How about these? Yes, sir. So we're gonna throw a lemon mm -hmm. and parsley. Can we get some of the parsley, oh, parsley. flakes there right there? A little bit of parsley. And we're gonna we're gonna put a little parsley on the tippy top. <laughs> Wait. It might be Friday, but some of y'all. Oh. Almost surf and turf. Almost. Almost. Let me. Now. Does that look like a meal or does that look like a meal? That's a million dollars right there in your face. So Perfect. If, if you would like to do the honors, 
I'm just gonna get a little nibble and oh my god. It was so good. Look at that. I'm dying to try a little piece of this. I only want a little bit to start with. Here we go. Oh yes, Lord. This is so good right now. Mm-mm. And you could get these different meals. Mm-hmm. Southern Fries Saturday, every other Saturday at the Mercantile, Highway 66. If you're going to pass through and go to Bucky's, you got to see me first. Absolutely. You got to see me first. I can't believe how much you've actually created here in such a short time. Glenn, thank you so much for coming in and, and showing us your expertise. It's, thank uh, you for having me again. And, and I tell you what. What I found most enjoyable was, it wasn't difficult. Not difficult at all. It, it, it wasn't difficult making these, it wasn't difficult doing that. It just all came together, it was quick, it was fast and tasty. 30 minute meals. Absolutely. Once again, thank you my friend. Thank you for having me. I hope you get to do this again sometime. I wanna do it, I, I wish I could do it every week. That's and, excellent. And we keep it going. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us here at the Captain's Lounge Studios with uh, Louisiana Glynn. Um, this is the first time I've ever done a cooking show and I loved it. I just loved it, the way it all came together. So everybody, thanks very much for watching the show. Go and see Louisiana Glynn when he's out and about in the uh, Colorado area and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye from me. <laughs>